The inspiration for countless communities the world over, Letchworth Garden City is a very special place to live, work and invest in. Today it maintains the guiding principle of its founding fathers, that the wealth of the 5,500 acre estate should be reinvested in the estate and thereby retained forever by the Letchworth community. Join us now as we look back over some of the highlights from Letchworth's year-long centenary celebrations, taking in the many sights and delights of the world's first garden city. The year begins with a trip to Mansion House, London. Garden City. The Lord Mayor receives guests for presentation of plaques to mark the Letchworth Centenary celebrations, Wednesday, 29th January 2003. John Davis, I'm the, Lord's, I'm the Lord Mayor's Hall Keeper. This is where the Lord Mayor lives for his 12 months while he's in office. Um, all his entertainment is done on the first floor, which is the principal floor upstairs, which we'll be going to shortly. On the same night, back in the Garden City, people of the town celebrate the centenary at a special birthday party for Letchworth's founder, Ebenezer Howard. And as you know, it's Ebenezer's birthday today. Um, what do you think you would give him as a present? What would be the best thing for him if he was alive today? Oh, I, should... I, think, I would think the gardens probably yes, would give him the most pleasure. I think the present I'd quite like to give him mm, would probably be um, a book, probably, with uh, lots of colour illustrations of towns and communities throughout the world which have adopted his ideas. I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I, I mean, obviously, it's uh, significantly different to uh, when he was about and the ideals that he had, uh, but I think he'd actually be quite pleased with what we've currently got here at the moment. I'm sure he would be. I think if you also have a look around the town to see what is now going to be achieved, he would be very pleased. Probably the feeling that the work that he started a hundred years ago is going to carry on within the world's first gun city. Well, it's hugely significant for the Garden City because having had these plaques presented by the Lord Mayor of the City of London back in January, we've erected them on the site of the first of the Garden City Inquiry Offices. So people from all over the country, not least from London, were coming to the budding Garden City, uh, visiting the, uh, the site, hot as it was effectively, it was a wooden shed, choosing their plots and of course changing their whole futures. The centre of Letchworth undergoes a dramatic transformation as a one and a quarter million pound scheme delivered by the District Council creates the magnificent new gardens on Broadway. Renovations to the gardens are based upon the master plan for the Garden City's central square 
as proposed by Raymond Unwin in the early 1900s. Looking down the barrel, you try and stumble. The project, supported by the National Lottery, the Heritage Foundation, the County Council and Morrisons, gets a big cheer from people of all ages. Well, it doesn't count easy. It doesn't count easy. Well, thank you very much for inviting me back to Latchworth. It's a great pleasure to be invited to help you to celebrate your 100th birthday. I can remember reading about Ebenezer Howard and his concept of creating a better environment by acquiring land at rural prices rather than city prices. It's of course a hundred years ago exactly that the first sod was turned at uh, Murray Lane and on a worldwide scale the impact of what followed is probably hard to overestimate. Those who attended on that day were witnessing more than the birth of the first garden city. Um, they were witnessing effectively the birth of town planning in the United Kingdom. The District Council unveils Bettina Fernay's sculpture, Paradise Is, representing a symbol of Ebenezer Howard's vision and a framework for a new way of life. In November, armed with spades and forks, children from 17 Letchworth schools gather on the Greenway to take part in the planting of a hundred centenary trees. Beauty, there lies the deepest skin. I have ever seen.
event, a very special event this year, centenary fireworks. From the Spirella building, local historian Paul Palmer embarks on a series of walks and talks, charting the evolution of Letchworth from prehistory through to the present day. As you'll see shortly, we have evidence of use of this landscape going back to three or four thousand years BC. Yes, you'll know that it's called locally the Hill Way. Um, often referred to as the Ridgeway because of the, the way it follows this great ridge of, of hills. In the remote past, archaeology shows that it was probably up to a mile wide. It's what is called a braided way, that means a way with many different routes along it. And even today there are upper and lower ignorant ways in some places. Thank you very much. My understanding, Mr. Telford Morton came down from up north, on the borders of Scotland, and he was quite famous for his allotments and his gardening. And I didn't want to do a, a, a guy there standing holding vegetables. I wanted to do the vegetable holding the holding the man. wood is a piece of redwood, Wellingtonia, which came from the estate up on the hill here. Um, probably taken down and hit by lightning, I should think, and became dangerous. You're leaving me here. I hope the, the public will get the same perception of the man that I got just reading about him and hearing about his love and his passion for gardening and his vegetable allotment. It is paying tribute to a man that I dearly wish could have been with us this morning. I refer, of course, to Telford Morton. I first met Telford uh, a few weeks after I arrived in Letchworth. I was standing on the Broadway looking at the old North Hearts College buildings, plotting their demise. <laughs> a voice came from nowhere. Son, come here! <laughs> it's wrapped around like a kilt. <laughs> I think that's the idea, isn't it? Here we go, he's coming, he's coming. Oh. Oh. There he is, there he is.
time in the Garden City and Radwell Meadows is the setting for the opening of the Greenway, a new pathway encircling the town. In principle, it's about 13.6 miles, five marvellous resource centres, all of them very, very different. And hand in hand with that, we have the planting of tens of thousands of trees and of miles and miles of hedgerows. Three, five, four. Can you tell us anything about your grandfather? What he was like? Of course, I was very young, mm -hmm. but he was always very generous. He paid for my education, and uh, so it was a great benefit to me. Mm -hmm. And do you think he'd be proud of Letchworth and the oh, greenway that's been made today? Yes, oh, I'm sure, sure he would. When you, when you look at the rest, what's going on in the rest of the country, there's nothing like it, is there? It's, it's a very nice place to walk around. I haven't done the third, all of it. I've done parts of it and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think it's very nice that people don't have to travel far. They can, um, there's facilities for the children here and you can just get out into the country and enjoy our garden city, I think it's wonderful. And there are some, some rather nice uh, areas of landscape along the Greenway, particularly the one we're at at the moment, which is the um, Radwell Meadows area, which is, in my opinion, one of the finest little bits of landscape that we've got left on the estate. We've got the, the River Ival, which rises not very far away in Bulldog, and runs as a fairly unpolluted stream at the edge of the, uh, the meadows, full of wildlife, and adjacent to the river we've got uh, meadows, some of which have got relatively unimproved pastures with lots of wildflowers, interesting wildlife, there are lots of trees and hedges, and again, that attracts a, a good deal of wildlife, including some rarities. I think the Greenway is a terrific art because it would certainly bring in, bring into play some of the ideas of the founders of Letchworth about marrying the town and country together. They've done a fantastic job. The Greenway itself is obviously a fantastic facility for the area and the amount of money that's been spent on conservation as well in the area is great. Well, I'm a local girl, so um, I just live down the road and I'm very interested in, in anywhere that encourages people to come out and engage with the countryside. And, and also this place you know, encourages wildlife, so not only does it reach into every part of the community here in Letchworth, but also to all the little um, you know, wildlife animals which um, who, who should not be forgotten, and they're often overlooked, with hedgerows being ripped up all over the country, and, yeah. and wildlife domains being, you know, destroyed. And here, you know, it's a place to bring people together and, and animals. The Heritage Foundation's main contribution to the centenary, the Greenway improves access to and the quality of Letchworth's countryside, making it easier for people to enjoy the great outdoors. Standalone Farm is the place to be, as more than 10,000 people flock to the Centenary Country Fair and Folk Festival. Hearts ring out some kind of love for themselves Oh, you have a season ticket? Yeah. Excellent. So what do you think? Have you had a fun day today? It's been really, really good, yeah. It has been great. I think it's lovely, yeah. yeah. Very good. And what's your favourite part today? Uh, the horses. The horses? Mm -hmm. Have you got a favourite part for today? Yeah, piggies. The 
It's good. It's a good idea. Yeah, it uh, brings communities together. It's really good. It came in at eleven with my other grandchildren, and then went back and she was doing her homework, and we came back after she'd finished, and, and she's still enjoying it. So, what's been your favourite part today? The animals. The animals. What was your favourite animal? Uh, the ponies over there. Summon when the boat comes
a purveyor of rhymes, an entertainer at all times. My mind's all divine, I hardly read it from crime. Well, we were asked to make a big noise for Letchworth Garden City and we wanted to make it as meaningful as possible for the children. So we thought we would bring in a lot of the history of Letchworth Garden City. Well, the instruments are made from the trees that were felled in Kennedy Gardens, now Broadway Gardens. Um, and the children had pieces of wood brought in that were very basic and then they had to sand them and paint them and decorate them. And I'd like to think that the instruments that they've made will actually be very special to them because of how they were made and where they've come from. Oh, we all love Letra Garden City. There are loads of things that we can do. Brownies, beavers, scouts and cubs, rainbows, guides and lots of clubs. Oh, we all love Letra Garden City. It's a hundred years old today And so we'd like to say On this special day A cheerful Edgeworth Hip hip hooray The town centre comes alive for a weekend of music, drama and dance and sees the largest event ever staged in the heart of the Garden City. Do you like it here? Yeah, it's yes. a pretty cool town. Yeah, great place to be. I think it's all uh, very good. It's, it's brilliant. I'm sure Ebenezer Howard would love it. All the people seem to love it. And it's great to see them all out on the streets. It's great. Yeah, it's a lovely town. We've lived here about three and a half years now. Yeah. We moved from, we're originally from beside Sheffield, but we love it here. It's a lovely town. Today, it's really successful because the, uh, the whole spirit of the thing is, um, you know, it's a hundred times better than a normal day. And I think it's made people look at the town in a different way. Ottawa 
was always known as the Rambling Blade. More than 450 local school children and 100 musicians come together. Their mission, to make a big noise for Letchworth Garden City. We've had a module built for, of the spy, and also we invited three shipmates that served on the spy during the Second World War, and they opened the exhibition this morning. Hello there, sir. Can I ask you what you brought along with you today? It's a Coventry Machinist high wheel tricycle. This is the Chelsmore model. It's a Chelsmore convertible, which can be converted into a sociable. That means to carry two people. So you take the wheel off bolt an extra piece of frame in, link all the bits up and move the steering across to the centre there and there you are, you've got a, a, a sociable. Can you all tell me what bikes you brought along with you today? Well this is a BSA Bantam ex post office 1955, I've had it since 1965 right. and, I, and um, I bought it for £10 as it stood, spent 20 on it and got it on the road and I've been doing my own maintenance ever since. Well, it's got me 300,000 miles plus in 23 countries. What's been your favourite thing you've seen today? Motorbikes. 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 The, Motorbikes. Yeah, the yeah. classics. They're good, are they? Yeah. What would be your ultimate classic car? My ultimate classic car? It would have to be a Rover V835. Yeah. Rolls Royce. Any particular vintage or...? No, it, just any one would do. Any one. Classic dream car would be? Uh, East Art Jaguar, a Moscovich. Moscovich? Yeah. Oh gosh, I don't know really. A Morris Traveller for me. A Morris Traveller? Morris Traveller. My ultimate classic car. Yeah. They have to be the, uh, the old, the original Austin Martin. E-Type Jack. E-Type Jack? Yeah. Oh, uh, Tramp Stag. I like the MGA. The MGA? Yeah. Well, the one I'd like uh, of all them cars <laughs> is the Ford Prefect. Ford Prefect? If I had one, that was the one I'd like because because it's the way it is, you know, the way, it's, the way it looks. You know, and I'm a Ford man anyway, so I've always been a Ford man. I've had every Ford you can have. Hello everybody in there, nice to see you. It's Letchworth. Hooray! Centenary. Hooray! And we're having a great time. Are you enjoying today? Yeah. yeah. What's your I favorite? enjoyed yesterday as well. Yeah, What's your favourite part noise. of the last two days? Uh, um, um, seeing the cars going around. All the nice all cars. The and that. All the bikes. <laughs> the bike, you like the bikes? the music. Oh, the sun is 
children in my class are currently working on a musical instrument called a woofit. Uh, woofit stands for a wooden one octave organ for young technologists. And it was designed by Bill Cleghorn from Cleghorn Waring, a company in Letchworth that makes and manufactures and sells pumps for all kinds of industrial uses. Various musicians from Elmdale School have been uh, composing bits of music and rhythms and various things with a view to this all being brought together tomorrow in a concert for four, all four schools at the place of Hall. generations of scientists, engineers, mechanics, technologists and musicians and musical instrument makers are not just going to appear as if by magic. Sparks of interest and self-belief have to be struck in young minds. to the lovely sunny lakes of the city. Can I therefore wish everyone the best of luck for both the Junior Sportathon and the Senior Sportathon. And can I ask our guests of honour to join me to release I'm told 2,000 balloons to launch Sportathon 2003. Twelve Letchworth sports teams line up for a day of It's a Knockout style fun, requiring a mix of skill, speed and by no means least, a great sense of humour. Star, you're losing at your game. You are addicted to the poison of the fame. Here's to tomorrow when you are gone. You know that everybody wants to impress you. They copy all your clothes and your new shoes. Dress the same as you dress today. How are you doing this afternoon? Uh, so far, I think we've just got five points, but we're looking forward to this one. Get some points back with us, I guess. Any secret tactics? Uh, roll around a lot and fall over, I think. So how did you do in that last game? Yeah, really good, actually. The team really pulled out all the stops and we, uh, we got it together there. The girls did fantastic on the first leg. Left us a really big lead and we really brought it home. Well done, boys. How did you do in that last event? Not too bad. It was quite good that time. We got it together. The others have been a bit rubbish. Are you going to win? Oh, I think so, yes. Who do you think is your main rivals in the day? Uh, at the moment, I would say the running club. And are they in the lead? Um, they're second at the moment. 
I hear you're the secret weapon. Well, I wish this were true, but I think I'm the secret something else. Certainly not a weapon. I do my best, but I'm getting on a bit. Female member. This is Judith. <laughs> we think we're nearly last, but we're going to catch up in this. How'd you go in that last game? Uh, it was a bit of a shocker, to be honest with you. Um, we're dark horses, I think. Yes, yeah. so we're starting slow. You know, kind of fooling the enemy and coming back at, at the end very strongly. to test you You threw away the love that they gave you And your team is Visitors flock from far and wide as Letchworth Garden City's many heritage buildings become the star attractions of the National Heritage Open Weekend. Well, I've been very interested in the Spirella building particularly because I've, I was born in Letchworth just a few hundred yards down the road okay, there. Yes. And I've lived in the shadow of the Spirella building and never ever have come to see it. The, the Spirella ballroom is just fantastic. Yeah. And this is the real bonus. I hadn't realised we were going to get onto the roof. Well, I think it's really great. It's lovely to be able to see inside this building yeah. um, after having known it in its various guises all these years. Um, lovely to see it done up, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's very nice yeah. to see it restored. And what do you think about it? Magnificent. The Spirella building is one of my 
favourite buildings in the whole world. I just absolutely love it. I love all the visual puns of it. Well, we saw it advertised on the television and it looked very interesting and, you know, we had heard about Letchworth over the years, so we thought it would be a good place to come and see a bit more about it. Hello, are you from Letchworth yourself? No, we're from Stevenage. Live near Leicester. From Huntingdon. Again. Come all the way over from North Essex, just north of Chelmsford. London. Only from Henlow. We're from the Isle of Wight. This brilliant two days is only made possible by the large amount of support and assistance from volunteers working within Letchworth churches and heritage buildings. It's a very unusual architecture. I've never seen a building with, uh, well, so many turrets and things around. I found the cloisters a fascinating place. I have lived in the area for some while, and seeing those big towers was uh, always a sort of mysterious place, I thought. I'm really interested in the Garden City as a concept, and um, this building is amazing to look at so we thought we'd come and have a poke around inside. We've already been to several of the buildings in the town already and I, although I don't live in Letchworth I am a great admirer of the settlement. I've read a lot about it so I thought I'd come along and see exactly what they do and I've been to the slideshow and picked up some literature and uh, it's all very interesting. The building is in beautiful condition and it's been a pleasure to be here. It's a special, that's right, yeah. special temporary exhibition which opened today right. for the the, yeah. teary, you know, the Heritage mm -hmm. Open Weekend, um, and I've borrowed them from pretty much all over the, the country, really, from as far down as Cornwall, you know, over to Cambridge, Southampton, and the Tate Gallery. What local people know as Fairfield Hospital, right? Um, which when Ratcliffe painted this painting was the Three Counties Asylum, mm -hmm. so it was the, <coughs> the mental hospital for um, Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, and Cambridgeshire, I think. Um, and William Ratcliffe was lodging at that time on the Wilbury Road, which is just down here, and this is the view he would have seen from the backs of the gardens. Right. And actually, the gentleman who bought this thought it was a French chateau. We're taking part in the um, Electoral Heritage Day, and uh, been going around all the churches that are open and all the different buildings, having a look and uh, finding out some new things about Letchworth. I just think it's wonderful. It's amazing how much talent people have got. You know, to put, come, all come together like this and produce such wonder.
2003 was a special year for a very special town. And as we look back upon the celebrations, let's remember it was all made possible by the hard work and dedication of the members of Letchworth Garden City's many clubs, societies and organisations. And so, as Letchworth's first hundred years come to a close, the town looks forward to the future, safe in the knowledge that the proceeds of the Garden City estate will continue to be reinvested into the community. Thank you.